Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Shern. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Shern. Welcome back to this podcast. As always, my name's Alexa, and this is the place to get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. I'm so glad you're back because today we're breaking down Enneagram Type 2 through a special interview that I have with one of my very best friends. Her name's Carly Hufford. She's actually been on the show before. I'll make sure and link that up in the show notes. It was one of the very first episodes here at Simple Roots Radio. But if you want to check that out, you can go back and do that um, and learn more about Carly. But today I wanted to have Carly on because she is an Enneagram Type 2. And as you know, we're in the Ennea Health series. And the whole mission behind this series is to help you take your Enneagram number and what we know about that number and create nourishing life rhythms that you can actually maintain. Because my whole goal in life is to make health who you are, not just something you do. Like it's so a part of us and it's ingrained in us enough that it's just our natural everyday rhythms of life, not just this life that we have to live for a number on the scale or for the next best diet. Like get off the constant chase of what we know is health and just live with health so that we can live to be and do something so much greater. Like, I just don't believe that we were purposed here on this earth to live for health. And I want to help us break free of that. So we're going to do that in this Enneagram Health series. Last week on the show, we broke down Enneagram Type 1. I had another friend on the show who is a hard Enneagram 1. And we talked about these rhythms and these lives and the struggles that she's had to overcome to make herself the healthiest version that she can be. Now, I do want to clarify that I do not believe that the Enneagram is another way to just label yourself. It's not the end-all be-all, but I hope that in these interview series that you can start to uncover that while you might be an Enneagram 2, we're all a little bit different and we're going to perceive things in different ways based on past experiences. And that is fantastic. So rather than this being the end-all be-all, this is just a guide to maybe show you some weaknesses that you can overcome. And most importantly, What are the strengths that you can use to override all the negativity in your life and help you to become a better version of yourself? And more importantly, just live for greater purpose. So today, like I said, on the show, we have Carly Hufford, a dear friend of mine, and she is also an Enneagram too. Now, unlike the other Enneagram types, I am an Enneagram type too. So this is going to look a little different because we're going to kind of go back and forth based on how each other views um, these different questions that I pose in the interview. So stay tuned as we talk about some of the hurdles and struggles of being an Enneagram too, and some of the things that she has learned to become a healthier version of herself as with me and some encouragement to give you as an Enneagram too, as you walk in health and how other people can come alongside of us and support us. Anyways, that's what we're diving into today. If you're loving the Enneagram series, I would love for you to share it with other people. Take a picture of the podcast, post it on social media, or head on over and leave a rating and review on iTunes. Yes, just search for Simperitz Radio or go to simperitzwellness.com backslash review and leave a simple rating and review. These really do mean the world to a podcaster. It brings life to the show and helps other people find it who wouldn't otherwise hear about it. So if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes to maybe drop a note on social media or send it to a friend in the email or just leave a simple rating and review, it would literally mean the world to me. If you want to know how to surf an Enneagram to you, <laughs> it's this. Okay, in all seriousness though, we're going to get back to the show. But like always, don't forget to head to the show notes. That's simperitswellness.com backslash 184 to get all the information on today's show as well as the download that you're going to want to grab if you're an Enneagram type 2. So head on over there to get that. But for now, let's get started and welcome Carly to the show. Welcome to the show, Carly. This is the second time you've been on the show. You were one of my very (laughs) first guests a long time ago when this whole thing started. So thanks for coming back on. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Yes, we share the same Enneagram number. So I think it'll be kind of fun to like see how you answer the questions and just see how, like how close it is. Like I never know, like I'm, I'm sure all Enneagram numbers, like within it, there's much different scopes of how people view things and live their lives. Mm-hmm. So it'll be kind of fun to, to see this and relate to this. And part of the reason I started with one, because I understand ones, twos, and threes probably better than any other 
number. <laughs> so when I get up into like six and <laughs> seven and eight, I'm going to be like, who are you? And you're a mystery. But Garrett, you live, your husband's a seven, <laughs> yeah. correct? Is this what I've heard? He is, I think so. We were just talking about this, um, not last night, but the night before, what number he was. And I can't remember, but it was like, yeah, to a T, whatever it was. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, it was like, he was like, yeah, that is me. <laughs> it is kind of funny how it so. like can pinpoint so much of your personality and how you act in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so Peyton's a very strong three. Like, I'm not sure he even has wings. Like, he's just a three through and through. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, so, that's why I understand threes a little bit more, too. But, okay. So, you're an Enneagram 2. Just give us a brief overview about an Enneagram 2 and what you love about it and maybe what you struggle with with the Enneagram 2. Okay. Well, Enneagram 2 is called, like, the helper, which I think is what yeah. I love about about it the most is that like you're like oh there could be nothing wrong with being like mm -hmm. a helper you know um but basically it's just um that we care for people and yeah I looked up like all the different things about like what a two is and some of them like I don't want to align myself with but it's totally me like the people pleasing yeah also just I want to align myself more with like the generosity and uh, being willing to help and seeing needs mm -hmm. that I can be like helpful at instead of the negative, which is also like the people pleasing and also just the motivations behind my um, actions mm -hmm. to be helpful, if that makes sense. I don't know if you would agree with that yeah. as well, since you're too. I mean, I totally agree with that. Like, I love the helper, like the giving, like, mm -hmm. I feel like that stuff really fills me up. But at the same time, I noticed that, and, and what I've learned from the Enneagram, like doing the Enneagram stuff is to struggle with bitterness probably oh, yeah. more than any yeah. other Enneagram type um, and resentment. And it's because we have like this untold, like, I, I'm filling you, but I also need you to do that. Yes. And I'm not going to ask you for it. So yes. I want you to like guess that I need you to do that. <laughs> exactly. Well, even so the, like a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Garrett about like something and he was just saying like, I really don't want this issue that I was talking about to create anger, like in bitterness in you. And at first I was like, I'm not an angry and bitter mm -hmm. person. And then I'm like, Hey, wait, yeah. I'm like, I am. <laughs> I'm like, it, it is true, though. Like, those things, like, are, like, mm -hmm. in me. And the thing about the Enneagram that I've, like, loved learning is that, like, you are kind of, like, the number you are based on, like, past, like, hurts in your life, which I find, like, mm -hmm. really, really mm -hmm. fascinating. Yeah. And so that... So just like, yeah, that is fascinating. Yeah. And just mm -hmm. like looking back at like why I like am a helper and why like I have to have like the, the struggles I do with like bitterness and like I want people to help me, but yet I'm not willing to like ask for that mm -hmm. help myself, but I'm willing to like give and give and give up myself to other people. And I really value like um, words of like affirmation, you know, especially uh yeah being a two, I feel like, um, yeah, just the, like in ever probably just like growing up and, you know, and in, into adulthood, just like not feeling like I have been helped well, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, like I compensate mm -hmm. by like extreme helping others to the, mm -hmm. to the point where it's yeah. not always like healthy, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Be because when you get into twos, I mean, some of the things that twos struggle with, and I mean, honestly, some of the things that I feel like brought me to my lowest points was what I perceived as a very healthy thing that I took into a very mm -hmm. unhealthy extreme. So what I mean by that, like giving beyond what I could give or caring for people beyond like twos have a tendency to carry other people's emotions for them, even though they didn't mm -hmm. ask you oh, to yeah. do that, yeah. right? Like, 
you like to carry the weight and to kind of keep digging into people's lives, even though they've, they have hard boundaries, right? Like it's sometimes hard for a two to understand boundaries because we ourselves struggle mm-hmm. with boundaries. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I feel like I took it to like, in my head, I was doing good things, right? Yeah. Like I was giving and I was caring and I was, you know, like all these things, but at the same time without having a two have healthy boundaries and, and what the, the, purpose of the series, like these nourishing life rhythms and really understanding, um, I feel like I lost Mm -hmm. myself in that and what would never satisfy. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought that that would bring me to completion or like by fixing other people somehow. Yeah. And all of that would be like, so like even like the, I don't know, excitement or whatever emotion you would get out of like helping someone like it was so, it's always so short lived, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now what? Like, I need mm-hmm. to like do that ag- like mm-hmm. again, um, or find something else to like t- something else to fix, so that like I can get that like quote unquote high um, from just mm-hmm. like helping people, which sounds like it's like a mm-hmm. good thing to help people. <laughs> That's where like my struggle is. I'm like, right. it's good to help, but. Like right. we as the two can take it to very unhealthy places quickly. Yes. Right. Right. And in in a sense, it's like at some level I mm-hmm. idolize oh, yeah. myself enough to believe that I was another person's mm-hmm. God in some oh, way. Yeah. You know, like I mean that's really hard to say, but yeah. <laughs> there is a level of that of, mm-hmm. of reaching that and and having no boundaries is so like when I did the research, twos are the most likely to become codependent, right? Like we're the most likely to enter unhealthy relationships and stay there and become unhealthy because of it. And not just relationships, but we also tend to have the most unhealthy relationship mm-hmm. with ourselves. And I think I could see this in my own life because like I said, I thought fixing other people would fix me. Like somehow doing something like this, it's like a very mm-hmm. works based mindset of like, if I work hard enough, then eventually someone's going to love me. Like I want to be loved or notice me. Like mm-hmm. I want to be noticed or accept me in that way. I don't know. How yeah. About that. Yeah, for sure. So, and one thing like I was looking at is like the sin struggles that like specifically my number has and like the root of it came down to like, I struggle with pride. And at first my first yeah, initial yeah. yeah. Doesn't that suck? My I hate that word. <laughs> no, uh, like for real, no. Yeah. And then I'm like, how prideful is even like my reaction was like, nope, I do not struggle with pride. <laughs> and I'm going to pride myself and not uh-huh. struggling with pride. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, yes, that is so, so true. And mm-hmm. even with the like inability to sometimes let people like help me um, because mm-hmm. I want to be the one who's the helper, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I subconsciously am being very prideful in the fact that other people would love to just help me out, maybe not in the way that I desired, but really want to reach out to me and like help me. And by me saying no, that's like a pride thing. It's like, no, I, I got it. I got mm-hmm. it. Cause I want to be the helper. I don't need you being the helper. I need to be the one helping, not the mm-hmm. helped. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My mom always used to tell me, stop being so prideful. Just ask for help. And I was like, I always was like, how is asking for help being prideful? Like, that's just me taking mm-hmm. responsibility and owning who I am and dealing with my own problems And she like kept telling me that. And it wasn't really until I started doing the Enneagram research and recognizing that my deadly sin is pride. And I was like, oh my (laughs) gosh, she's right. (laughs) This is so hard. Um, But it's so needed. And I think in order for an Enneagram 2, like to get yourself healthy, right? Like, because there's all levels of the Enneagram. How have you worked through this stuff and how have you created changes in your own life to to really kind of overcome what what can be really damaging through the resentment and the bitterness and all that stuff that can grow from basically our unmet expectations so um 
one thing I laughed at is when you like put out uh like your thing about like I need like an, an Enneagram too. And in my head I'm like, every Enneagram two is going to raise their hand because they're they want to be like Right. I will help. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Did you really want to help? Yes. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, there's a need. Yeah. Oh, that is yeah. A need. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So one thing that I have learned, which I feel like God has really given me such a wonderful, like, partner in life to just help me recognize, like, my own sin struggles and also the positive to like who mm-hmm. I am. Um, but mm-hmm. he has really like shown me that first of all, I don't need to be the one to help everybody. Like I can give other people mm-hmm. chances to help. I am almost kind of in a way he described it as like stealing from other people. Cause it's like, I'm so quick to, to help out just, you know, someone sends out an email and it's like, I need, like, I have this need and I'm like, got it. But I never Mm -hmm. really let other people have that chance to bless someone. So I'm almost feeling their Mm -hmm. blessing, you know, um, Mm -hmm. uh, that, so just pausing Mm -hmm. and also understanding that like I have, I have and continue to over myself in so many Mm -hmm. of those helpful areas that it's not good if that Mm -hmm. makes sense yeah yeah no I think it's totally uh a two is very prone to giving um it's also in of all the Enneagram types twos are the number one most likely to burn out and to quit or to just stop altogether um And I can totally relate to that because at some level, I feel like in an unhealthy way, at least when I was unhealthy and still working through this, but the give and expectation that you're going to get something back Mm -hmm. or filled back up from that uh, is very unrealistic to put on so many people because they Mm -hmm. just don't think that way. Um, But I feel like with like we can overexert mm-hmm. ourselves, right? Like you said, like, and that can lead to burnout or just this pulling away. And I mean, you know, firsthand, like I've pulled away at points and it is not, it's because I've become so unhealthy in what I've done. So prideful in that, that it's totally mm-hmm. wrecked me and coming back to this, this healthy version. And I think that there has to be some level of like, how do twos fill themselves back up? Because they give and give and give and give. And I think that we forget that we can't always expect other people yeah. to fill that tank yeah. for us. So what in your life, what do you do to fill yourself back up? Like, how do you, you give all the time. How do you, how do you, cause you can't just yeah, keep giving, yeah. right? Like, how do you get yourself full? Um, so one of the things that I have found like most important to me, um, so that I don't like, so that I can like be filled up so then I can be healthy to like pour out, I guess, um, Mm -hmm. is to fill my mind with God's word and, um, to be Mm -hmm. in prayer. And when I'm not doing those and I am at a, I can tell, like, I'll get to an unhealthy point of like giving of myself to like other people. And then like my, Mm -hmm. Honestly, like our family feels it, I feel like the most, you know, um, Garrett Mm -hmm. and all, all the kids Mm -hmm. probably they can tell because I start getting like stressed out and it's like, I have to make this meal for this family. I need to go like do this for this friend. I need to like run this errand so I can get, you know, and it's just like to the point where I start crowding out like the things that I should be doing, which are being in God's word and being in prayer um, Mm -hmm. for the sake of like, but I'm doing good things. I'm doing these things that Mm -hmm. like, I should be like have Mm -hmm. a servant heart, but like ultimately my heart isn't like in a servant hearted posture. So really 
It's very yeah. Martha. Yes. No, I was thinking about that today before you even called. I was like, you know, I have always resonated with Martha in that story because I'm like, of course, like the kitchen needs cleaned up. Like, uh, <laughs> like right. Jesus, who is going to make you yes. the food? Like, yes. are you going to go hungry? I'm like, you should be. <laughs> Give yes, her some credit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, and like, even one of my favorite, um, like, I love Elizabeth Elliot, and she is such a wise woman mm-hmm. who is now with Jesus. But one of her quotes that has always stuck out to me and always been something I guess I come back to when I've started to crowd out Christ in my life with other, like, good things is um, Mm -hmm. her quote is, one reason we are so harried and hurried is that we make yesterday and tomorrow our business when all that legitimately concerns us is today. If we really have too much to do, there are some items on the agenda which God did not put there. Let us submit the list to him and ask him to indicate which items we must delete. There is always time to do Mm. the will of God. If we are too busy to do that, we are too busy. So I have found myself being Mm. like too busy doing good things because I am a two Mm -hmm. and want to be a helper that Mm -hmm. I forget that I can do all those good things and they're meaningless unless I really Mm -hmm. do have my life centered on Christ. Yeah, it's such a, I feel like until you really get yourself here, I feel like it's such a hard viewpoint to come at because it seems so opposite of what we're told. Mm-hmm. Like, do good things. You know, like like you said, they're not bad things. It's the motive behind them and, and how mm-hmm. we're going about them that is wrong and really damaging for a two. And I agree with you. You know, like, I, I feel like for me and getting healthy, one of the best things that I did was daily solitude with God. Like, daily mm-hmm. first thing like my day does not go well and Peyton will even be like mm, I feel like <laughs> you didn't spend any time with Jesus today did you and I was like I did not and I am a little bit like stressed and feeling emotional and all the things and so I feel like there's this grounding of twos are so relational and and I even read this like that even in like a church setting twos have a hard time just focusing because when we're around other thing, other beings, we we feel so deeply and we can sense other people's needs without mm-hmm. them even telling us that it's hard for us to focus solely. And so this this act of like, which is very seasonal in life, like you have a lot of little kids. So to be alone without needs is very rare. But I feel like there is some practice of just just being alone and and quietness that is hard for to because we're so relational but yet so mm-hmm. life-giving um and it kind of goes along with what you're saying but i have picked up on that like ever since i read that like when i'm around other people like i very much am concerned about what they're thinking or even what they're thinking about me mm-hmm. or how i can help them you know all these things just like flood our minds that it really is hard to just focus on 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 christ and and yeah. what fills yeah. us oh i it's like we don't even have to do anything to get the life stuff right out of us. Yeah. It just goes. <laughs> yeah, and I, like, totally agree with that. Just even being, like, you know, we have a connection group that we meet with weekly, and it's like, okay, like, I need, like, you can just sense, like, oh, you're going through a hard time. What can I do to, like, help you get out of that? Like, I need to, like, mm-hmm. fix it. And like, I, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's just, yeah, just to even take a moment to like step back is really hard and just be like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't need to be everyone's savior. <laughs> right. I, I don't because praise the Lord. Jesus is the real savior. <laughs> right. I think again, it can come across as like, for me, it's like learning that I can have these really big feelings for other people and for, for Mm -hmm. needing and for helping, but they don't always have to like drive my life. Right. That's a Mm -hmm. dangerous place when those feelings drive my life, because then I'm constantly also concerned, you know, like 
um, I think the biggest fear of a two is being unwanted or unloved. Mm -hmm. Um, And twos tend to be a little bit on the needier side. We need to know other people are approving of us. Like we like that, that feedback that we're getting. And if we feel like that's threatened or that we're not getting it, then I think it's easy for twos to go to the assumption on the other extreme that things are, are bad and it's all, yeah. all our fault. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Like I completely agree with that. Now, are you like a words of affirmation person then too? Cause now I'm like curious, like, you know, like, cause a while ago, uh-huh. well, when we were getting married, like it was the popular thing was yeah. like whatever the love languages. Five love languages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, mine is definitely like words of affirmation uh-huh. is yours words of affirmation. And mine is actually quality time. Hmm. Interesting. But I feel like I'm a very needy too. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so terrible. I like, I really like to be with people. But it's funny I say that because I feel like I also have introverted tendencies. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I'm very, I want to be with safe people. I want to be with people that I don't have to question Mm -hmm. because I feel like we, when we're out in public and, or, you know, like even what I do here, I'm very constantly aware of what people are feeling and that's overwhelming. And, and there's an aspect of, I want to spend quality time with people that I don't have to worry about their feelings. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, Peyton's a three, and so this is our struggle. One, his is not quality of time. <laughs> um, but threes are very known for not showing a lot of emotion, like very surface level. Mm-hmm. And so I don't always feel like I know deeply, like I don't have that affirmation that I want, that I'm wanted or loved enough. And so when I spend quality time with him, I want him to reassure me of that. So I feel like I do have quality time, but I feel like along all of that to say, I feel like words of affirmation do matter. Mm -hmm. But do you, do you struggle with the trust of what other people are saying is true? Do you feel like you have that? Or is that just me? Like, do I trust that what you're saying is true? Or do you like really go by what people say? It it depends on like the level of trust I have in that person. Like, it's almost like when Mm -hmm. somebody tells you, oh, you look nice. You're like, "Uh, are you saying it Mm -hmm. just to be polite? And that's what I'd like to hear. Or are you really like telling me like Mm -hmm. the truth? Um, Mm -hmm. So it's like you were saying like safe people. I believe Mm -hmm. them. But also when they don't give me like when they give me, I'd say criticism, Mm -hmm. it takes me a little bit to process that. Even though I say that I want Mm -hmm. it and I do want it, but I'm like, but I need words of affirmation. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think if I, I think if I really, if I retook it, I feel like words of affirmation would be extremely high. Yeah, yeah. See, I am a quality, like, time person, though, too. That matters. Because mm-hmm. if you can, like, say nice things to me, but if I don't actually, like, have that time spent with you, your words probably mean, honestly, less to me. Um, and I'm probably less likely to believe them if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So when we talk about getting healthy as an Enneagram too, we kind of talked about being alone, like having solitude, like having this very Christ-based philosophy. Um, but what we know about twos is they technically are one of the most unhealthy Enneagram types. Um, twos are, I have a high, like when we just talk about physical health, a high percentage of them um, emotionally eat. We see a lot of binge eating. We see a lot of overweight twos. And part of the reason is, is um, they believe this is because twos like to stuff their feelings <laughs> and kind of numb their feelings in a way. Like I, I, I tell Peyton, I feel like my heart is three sizes too large and I don't know how to control that all the time. And so I have all of these feelings that are so overwhelming to me at times that I've really had to learn to to not let my feelings drive me, Mm -hmm. but to kind of like let them be there, but not also not suppress them either. So 
I mean, there, there's a lot of ideas, but I think it's fascinating that ones tend to stuff their feelings. I don't know how you feel about any of this, but that's from some of the research that I did. They stuff their feelings. They also tend to give so much that they don't give back to themselves. So they are too busy to uh, take care of themselves, too busy to have mm-hmm. quiet time, too busy to uh, have fun sometimes, too busy tending to other people to really listen to themselves. How do you feel about any of that? Uh, I would like to disagree, but I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It doesn't stink. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, that's not me. No, it totally is because there are, I can think of many, many, many days and like, like seasons of life where it has just been like, I have let myself get so drained needlessly, like, there hasn't been a need for me. Like there are certain seasons of life where like, you're just going to be like more drained. Like it's, Mm -hmm. I think everybody goes through those, but they were needless seasons of being completely drained. Mm -hmm. And just like feeling like I had no time, time to myself, you know, ever. And, um, yeah, even just to like sit down and breathe, like it was like I, I'm just go 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 go, like do 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 do, like check off the yeah. like make my list in the morning of things that I need to do and uh, check them all off, and then come to the end of the day and just be drained and empty and be like, okay, well, tomorrow will be better, and tomorrow is mm-hmm. never like better in that sense. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so true. And I think, again, like I can't express how much just that alone time. And like you said, like that time with God is for one, because I think that, that I think the the limitless energy that we expend trying to find satisfaction in other things is just such a daily letdown mm-hmm. <laughs> and overwhelming. So if we if we take this a little bit further Like in your day to day, like what have you learned in your life? Because I look at you and think like, I mean, in general, like you're one of my, my health freak friends, like you, you live a healthy life and how have you created these healthy nourishing rhythms in your life? Like what are some of those practical tips that you do every day? You kind of mentioned like, you know, having that quiet time, but what else, what else do you do that really drives you and creates this health in your mind, in your body, in your soul every day? Um, I'd say, like, obviously, like, being in the Word and um, in prayer. So I have, Mm -hmm. like, there have been seasons of my life where I haven't gotten up before the kids. But I do so much better if I can start my day in whatever relative quiet. Because I feel like sometimes you wake up and, you know, just life. Kids are awake Mm -hmm. and you're like, really? Really? Why are you up? But, Mm -hmm. um yeah, with the intention of starting my day being reminded of who God is and who I am not and Mm -hmm. trying to humble myself, which is obviously hard for two. (laughs) Right, right. It's difficult with pride Um, to go into my day. um, Mm -hmm. That always, like, has been, like, been the best thing I could ever do for myself and so like you know like everybody Mm -hmm. was talking about like self-care for a while and I always thought that was really kind of like not selfish to some degree selfish but also like missing the point of like soul care that should be like the Mm -hmm. buzzword is like soul care because our soul is what is going to last you know, these bodies Mm -hmm. we have are just wasting away. So just making sure that I have spent time uh, with Jesus and um, just being, being reminded of who he is and that my strength comes from him. My ability to Mm -hmm. do anything comes from him. Um, It is not my own doing. I need constant reminder of that. And then also just telling myself no to certain things that I want to like immediately jump and say, yes, I'll do it. But to, and I think this also helps having eight children 
is that Mm -hmm. I can't, uh, there are the physical needs of my family that need to be met. Yeah. (laughs) Which are very important to me. So like, I just physically can't always like do everything that I want to jump in and say yes to. Uh So learning to say no to good things so that I'm not saying no to my family. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think um, learning to say no has been, it's been something that's been so healthy for me. And I wouldn't even tell you that I'm great at it, but I am getting good at saying, you know, I'll get back to you or I'll think about Mm -hmm. it. (laughs) And it's in that time because I think the instinctive reaction for a two is to say yes. Like if Mm -hmm. you ask a two to their face, it's it's so difficult to say no, Mm -hmm. even if they know that they shouldn't, even if they know it takes away from something else. Because I think that desperately deep down, we really do want to help everyone. Mm-hmm. In good ways, with good intention, but knowing that we all have boundaries and that we aren't the savior and we can't do it all, um, that has mm-hmm. been really good for me. And so, yeah, learning the boundaries and saying no has been critical for me. And I think that's really important that you said that, too, to to kind of take that in back into your control a little bit. Um, and I think also saying no kind of creates this margin in life that where twos are so quick to to just rush through life. Like you said, there's to-do lists and there are things to be done. And I feel like twos could just rush through life that we forget to ever just be still and create this mm-hmm. margin in life to, to live life um, on some aspect. And just some of like the practical tips that I was giving people was to be with people, not to help people, but just to be with people for fun yeah. and community. Yeah. And I have found that that is so important and like really life giving Mm -hmm. is like making sure that I have like relationships that are just fun and easy and just enjoyable. Yeah. You know, to be like in relationship with and I I get excited when like I have plans with this person, you know, and it's not even around a need necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> look at us say that. Like it's so rare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just like I have learned that those things are needed and that I don't have to deprive myself of those things. Cause mm-hmm. somehow it was yeah. I would say can't like do those things because like yes, they're good things, but I could be doing better things, you know. Right. More, more useful yes. things. And that's totally pride yeah. right yeah. there. Pride right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. And I think that there's a level of um, twos have a hard time accepting pleasure and doing things just for enjoyment to just be. And that's something that I've had to learn too. And I think like some other practical tips is just like sitting down and like actually eating because you enjoy the food that you're eating. We also tend to be very loyal people and One thing that I do love about twos, and I don't know, I I think that you're this way too. Like I would never describe you as not, but very flexible. Like um, we're very easy to like, Mm -hmm. we just go with a flow kind of. Yeah. And some level though, I feel like I have a very regimented thing in my head, but if I'm out and I'm having fun and just to have fun, I feel like I'm very flexible Mm -hmm. with what I do. Like I don't really care what I do in that healthy perspective. But at home, if I feel like, I have a system of helping or I have a system of doing something. I expect that everyone else is going to do mm-hmm. it exactly like I'm going to do it. Um, like cleaning the kitchen. Like I expect that Peyton will do it like <laughs> I clean the kitchen. And he doesn't see life that way. And so something unhealthy that I've had to learn is to kind of drop the expectations at the doorway and recognize that a lot of people don't see or do things the way that I do. And that's not bad. It's not wrong. It's, mm-hmm. It can be okay. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, that's the expectations have been a huge yeah. hurdle for me. I don't know if that's a two thing or just, just me in general, but um, well, I set myself up for a lot of expectations. Well, and I've had to learn, like, Garrett loves to help me. And so mm-hmm. he will clean the kitchen. And it's not to, like, my expectation of, like, how I would clean it. <laughs> but I Bless them, right? <laughs> But I have to come to a place of he's doing it because he loves me and he wants to, he wants to serve me Mm -hmm. and I need to not be nitpicky about like the way the counters were wiped or like the fact that like I would have probably swept the floor or, you know, stuff like that where it's like, uh, (laughs) right. 
are you sure? Like I would have loaded the dishwasher mm-hmm. differently so that all the dishes mm-hmm. could have fit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he just wants to love and like serve me and just to like be okay with it, which is hard. And mm-hmm. I'm not always good at that, but yeah. also just stepping back and being like, he is trying to, to do those things for me out of a place of really just serving me. And I need to, accept those um because he loves me and yeah that is wonderful Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. I I totally agree like just setting the expectations at the door because what I'm realizing is that being a helper we recognize needs faster than any other type and so while I might be frustrated that Peyton's not picking up on the fact that the kids are crying or that they're whining, like, it's not him ignoring the situation. It's just that it has not even registered with him yet mm-hmm. because he doesn't see things the way that I see things. And, um, like, we're hypersensitive to people's needs um, for good and for bad, but it's it's not expecting other people to see that. And because in that, I can grow a lot of resentment really quickly. And so one other thing that I've learned is to voice my resentment or voice what's bothering me before it turns into resentment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't know about you, but I feel like I've had a hard time. Like I feel so much, but at the same time, I haven't always expressed my feelings in a healthy way or or made notice of them. And so what I do is I suppress them like twos are great at. Um, I just stuff them and then I explode. Uh, Yes, yes. (laughs) I, it's like life is fine until it's not. <laughs> I completely agree with that. There's been a situation happening like within uh, like our lives right lately. And it was like literally the thing that just set off the word vomit of just mm, like mm-hmm. everything, you mm-hmm. know, and because I'm also, I don't know about you, but very logical. Like I'm like, I, mm-hmm. I am not like a four where like, I'm emotionally driven, like, as, you know, like, I Mm -hmm. feel all the emotions. Like, I mean, I do feel emotions, but I, it's easier for me to be like, okay, that is not like a healthy emotion, Right. put it aside or like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, yep, they all, they call come rolling out. Yeah. It's not a good day when that happens. (laughs) Well, and I even like, even when those things happen, I'm like, that was just like the cherry on top. That was like too much, too much, you Mm -hmm. know? And I just like, couldn't, couldn't take it anymore. And it's like, Mm -hmm. it all comes out. And I'm like, I kind of wonder like how much like emotionally healthier I would be. Um, probably spiritually healthier, healthier and stuff. If I like dealt with those things, when those things arose instead of like making excuses why I shouldn't Mm -hmm. deal with them or even giving people Mm -hmm. excuses. I'm good at giving other people excuses for like the way they've like behaved or um, treated me or whatever. When I should have just, I could have just easily like brought it up in the moment. And then it's like, well, I can't really bring up like 10 years worth of, stuff. Right. Now. Right. So, right. And then yeah. it just is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, ones or twos don't easily forget either. At least I don't. Mm. Um, oh, no. I agree with that. <laughs> because we are feelers. And um, so it, it does come roaring to the surface. And it's not just like an incident that happened. It's like months and mm-hmm. months and months of things that just kind of snowballed to the point where we just couldn't hold it anymore. And I think that there is such value in in voicing those things and something I've had to learn. But at the same time, I think one of our biggest fears is this unwanted or unloving. So we never want to be a burden, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think some of the reasons like there's pride involved in why I don't ask for help. But I think on one hand, why I don't tell other people what's going on is because I don't want to be a burden to them. Mm -hmm. Like my needs, my needs aren't worthy yeah. Of being bad enough to need help. And so like, that's what goes through my mind. And then it's like, all of this just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until I can't hold it anymore. Mm-hmm. And then the other unnatural side of me that I hope no one else has to see, but my family comes out and it's terrible. <laughs> and then I'm yeah. like, but it would make so much sense in my head. But it's like this inner voice just convinces me that it's 
that if I said something, well, I don't want to be the burden. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm prideful enough that I don't want someone to have to come and help me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I totally, totally feel that. And yeah. um, I feel like <laughs> this conversation you and I are having are one that like, is the same one uh, like I've just recently been having with Garrett about just like stuff that's been going on. And I'm just like, I, I don't want to be a burden to other people. And yet the advice I would give other people who like have stuff going on is like, you're not a burden. Mm -hmm. Like that's the beauty of the body of Christ is that we all are to like support one another, like through the bad times and the good. And so ask for help. Like I would tell other people ask for help, but that's mm -hmm. probably because I'm also the helper. So it's like, right. <laughs> I want to, help. <laughs> but yet I so struggle with the actually asking for, for the help. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really tough. But on the same lines, like as we kind of wrap this up, what, what encouragement was you given Enneagram to on, on this journey of, becoming the healthiest version that they can be? I would say just kind of examine yourself and be willing to be, to be vulnerable to the fact that you are, that you do have like big struggles mm -hmm. that you do need help with. Like that we are not called to live this life alone. Um, and that it is okay to ask for help mm -hmm. so that we yeah. can be healthy helpers. If, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's a mask. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think you're right. Like, I think that we can mask our helping, like mask all of our insecurities and our pains and vulnerabilities and like by trying to help other people. Um, but I think, like you said, we're going to do a better job of helping people when we're healthy mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. I think people know that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And just to like, I guess constantly, like it's really the constant dying to like my selfish desires of wanting like all of these like affirmations to, mm -hmm. you know, and just know like, who am I actually doing this for? Am I doing it for other people? Am I doing it for myself? Which usually mm -hmm. I'm doing it for myself. Or am I truly like being generous with like my time, my resources, um, my abilities to the glory of, of God, you know, because mm -hmm. that's ultimately what I want my life to be. I mm -hmm. don't want to like get to the end of my life and being like, oh, well, I helped all these people for myself. And obviously it got me nowhere. It's like, right. I did this out of an overflow of the fact that like, I know who I am in Christ and he calls me to serve other people for his glory, not my own, not right. for um, mm -hmm. any hidden motive. And just mm -hmm. always trying to be, always asking God to, to reveal those like hidden motives that even I'm not aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like constantly, like, I feel like I have to constantly check my motive. Like, am I doing this to get something um, or to be known in a certain way? Or am I literally just doing this because I love, like, I want to love on them and serve them. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like I, I'm trying to be aware enough about when I go into certain situations, what my driving force is, mm -hmm. uh, which is not always easy <laughs> to be faced with the reality of what that answer might be. And while you might help someone in either way, I think we're doing ourselves the biggest disservice by not doing it in the healthiest way possible yeah. by expecting something in return, because the person you're giving to is never going to know that, but mm -hmm. you do. <laughs> mm -hmm. and it hurts. <laughs> um, okay. So, how would you say, the last question is, how would you say that other people who are not Enneagram type twos could encourage a two? Ooh, I feel like I need to know like more about the other Enneagram types. 
like if someone did something like that, you were like, wow, that really filled me or like that really made me feel encouraged. What, what does that look like? I mean, you kind of said words of affirmation. Yeah. Um, I don't even know. Yeah. (laughs) What would you say? I think, um, I think twos want to be noticed, you know, like I think that they want to be seen in some level, like, like you said, like at some point we felt like we haven't been helped in the way that we want to be helped. So we become really good helpers or we haven't been, you know, maybe noticed in the way that, um, we felt like we should. So I think recognizing or acknowledging, um, a two at some level, um, is important. Like you said, the words of affirmation, like, yeah. You, you know, like just like the little things to me are important. Yeah. And just as, yes. And like for me, a simple like thank mm-hmm. you for me personally goes a mm-hmm. long way. I would rather you just like tell me like in private, like, hey, thank you for doing this. And mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. all I need. It's just a simple. Yeah acknowledgement mm-hmm. of gratitude. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I uh I totally agree with that. It's it's the little things. Twos are unlike threes. Like I feel like twos like to be a little bit more behind the scenes, a little bit um we don't need to be known in a way that is in public. We want to be known in the behind the scenes way. Or at least that's how I feel. Yeah, you know like Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Like I am yeah. Definitely. I'm sure there are some twos that want to be like publicly acknowledged. And I think that that goes into yeah. it, just like part of my personality is that I, oh, being in front of people like terrifies me. So it's like, yeah. mm, <laughs> nope. <laughs> you will not get me to stand on stage mm. and do any of that. <laughs> um, but just like, mm-hmm. just to be acknowledged by, and just, like just simple um, acknowledgements that I did mm-hmm. actually help you. Um, it's like really what I like, mm-hmm. honestly, what fills me up. And also I feel like with that, Hey, if you're a brother or sister in Christ and you notice that I am just kind of being my prideful self, like take me in mm-hmm. private and just let me know, like, Hey, just be careful, you know? Yeah. And I think one more thing that I was kind of learning, um, just recently it came up is this idea of like, I think it's important to affirm how a two feels. Um, I think it's easy to twos like to fix things. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. but I don't think that we always want to be fixed. Sometimes we just want to be known. And I think that there's an affirmation of let me feel this. I mean, if it's not healthy, help me through it. Um, but don't just try to fix it, you know, like affirm, see me here. Like, that's what I, that's mm-hmm. what I'm like realizing. Like, just, can you just see me right here? Mm-hmm. And I think it's hard for twos, at least for me, it's hard sometimes to put all of that into words. Like I have all these emotions and I tend to suppress them. So for me to verbalize them is just like a mess of words. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think like, not having to understand every detail, but just affirming, okay, I see you here. Like I notice you and I want to help you, but I'm not going to force it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. All of that to say, this was fun talking to you about being a two. I feel like we could talk forever about this. Um, (laughs) I am just learning about it, but it is, it is fascinating how like we're all so different, but yet like Mm -hmm. the Enneagram wraps it up in um, just a nice overarching way about really what we need at the core of each of us of like that deadly sin and 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 that fear and how we need a savior to come in and and Mm -hmm. save us from from whatever each enneagram type has and for twos it's that that desire to be known and needed and wanted um yeah and the satisfaction will never come from uh, giving 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 anyways okay so okay. before we go, I have a few quick fire questions for you and then we'll wrap this thing up. So what is the first thing you do every morning for your health? Um, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I take a deep breath. <laughs> get in get into the word. Like that is like my like go to. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. That has been mine mm-hmm. too. It's just like I have to have solitude in the morning. Like I have to have moments alone because yeah. the natural tendency is to get up and go. Um, 
but making myself just slow down and sit down is really good. Okay. What's your favorite, um, health book or book that has helped you in this journey of like becoming a healthy version of probably, honestly, I'd say just, uh, end up Bible studies. I wouldn't say like, I have a specific, like mm-hmm. health book in mind, but, um, just through like learning mm-hmm. about like what I struggle with sin wise through like in-depth Bible studies has been the most like helpful health wise. Mm-hmm. Cause then I can better be like healthy mm-hmm. in other ways too. Yeah. Solid answer. What is one food you couldn't live without? Probably cheese or ice cream. Mm. Those are dairy. Yes. I, I love the times that I've had to like give up dairy have been the hardest. I'm like, what do I eat? (laughs) I'm like wallowing. I'm like, there's no food to eat. Uh, (laughs) I love cheese too. I would, that would be up there on my list. The last question is what's the best piece of advice you've ever received and want to leave us with? Ooh, I feel like I, when I read that question, because you sent me the question, Mm -hmm. I really like there has been two that have like really stuck out is to let other people help me. And mm-hmm. that advice was given to me years ago by my mother-in-law. Um, and she put it as, I think I even like said in one of my like uh, answers, but like stealing other people's blessings upon my life mm-hmm. um, by being like, nope, you don't need to help me. Um, yeah. So being willing to be helped. And because I love Elizabeth Elliot. I have to like end with like my favorite all time quote of hers, which is um, this job has been given to me to do. Therefore, it is a gift. Therefore, it is a privilege. Therefore, it is an offering I may make to God. Therefore, it is to be done gladly if it is done for him Mm -hmm. here, not somewhere else. I may learn God's way in this job, not in some other God looks for faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So just, like remembering that the jobs he gives me um, are to be done for him. Mm -hmm. I think that's just the thing that has always stuck out to me is like, I need to be doing everything for him. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Yeah. So good, Carly. I thank you so much for being here and um, sharing just your journey and how you've kind of sorted through this. And I mean, this stuff is kind of hard to talk about as a two, too. So um, (laughs) thanks for being here and being vulnerable with us. Yep. And uh, thank you for being a two. Yeah. (laughs) Makes it a little less intimidating to talk about being a two when you can kind of commiserate. (laughs) <laughs> that is me. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. love each other. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I just love Carly, and I hope that you love that as much as I did. Got a little longer than I anticipated because I was personally getting lost in the conversation. It's not every day you get to sit down with a person who is the same Enneagram type as you and just talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of it and how we can grow to become a better version of ourselves. So that was a lot of fun. I hope that you left encouraged. If you are an Enneagram 2, know that there is so much beauty and setting boundaries and really just knowing yourself, creating the self-awareness and being free to not let your emotions drive you, but let them just be a seat in the car. You know, like you can have those emotions, but they don't have to drive you. And we also don't have to suppress them. So like always, I have a free download for you if you're an Enneagram type two, giving you more of the practical everyday things in health that you can add or incorporate into your life to create these nourishing life rhythms. What I really want to do in these handouts is to give you ideas and prompts to get you thinking about who you are and what it is that you want in life. But also more than that, to give you like the nitty gritty practical tips on like, hey, here are some ways to structure your diet program and your exercise program and just your life in general that works with your personality type. Because what I get frustrated by is seeing so many people jump on the next diet or the next bandwagon that's promising to show them results when it is exactly opposite of who they are as a person and how that they already work. 
Like if you can't maintain this for life, it will never work. Like if it's not you or something that you enjoy, you'll never do it long term. So I hope with this Enneagram series, you can start to see like, hey, I resonate with that. That makes sense. And I can easily incorporate that into my everyday life. That's where I want to go with this because I believe you're really smart people and you don't need to be told exactly what to do. You just need to be shown and given the freedom and the permission to do you. And that's really what we want to do to make health, not just something you do, but who you are. So make sure you head to the show notes at simperitswellness.com backslash 184 to get that download, learn more about the show. And also don't forget to share the Enya Health series with other people. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in next week. We're coming back with Enneagram type three. I'll see you then.